Welcome back. My name's Steve and thank you for joining me on my photography journey today. Today we're going to talk about lenses and the selection that I've got when I use them and what I do with them. So these are the two lenses that I have that aren't on the camera at the moment. I've got the Nikon 24 to 50 and that's an f4 to 6.3. That's the one that I got with my camera in the first place. Um, so it's not the highest quality but it is nice and light and small. Then this is my most recent purchase. This is the 24 to 200, again, f4 to 6.3, but it's a nice big range. So I can zoom all the way into 200 millimeter focal length, which makes a big difference to my photography. And then I also have on the camera at the moment, so on my Z5, which I'm filming this with, I have the 35 millimeter f1.8, which is uh, my favorite lens. Um, the f1.8 aperture is brilliant and it makes for a nice shallow depth of field and gives this nice sharp images, which, which I love for my photography. So let's go through these one at a time and have a talk about them. So the 24 to 50, which is the one that I got first of all, as you can see, it's quite small. And the main benefit of this 24 to 50 lens is how small and light it is. As you can see, it's incredibly compact. It's very light. The lens itself, once you once you zoom it, does extend slightly, um, but not a huge amount. So that's it fully retracted and that's it fully extended. The optics aren't the best. It is definitely a cheaper lens, um, very plastic in its construction, but it does still have a big Nikon Z mount. Um, so these are, um, I mean, this is plastic, but that's okay. It doesn't make too much of a difference. The, the main thing is that it's small and light. It can do 24 to 50 millimeters, which when I started out made such a big difference. My old camera was a APS-C sensor, so a lot smaller, and that had a lens that wasn't interchangeable. So I was stuck with whatever that could do and the quality of that optics. But this made a big difference because I then had a lot more flexibility over what I could take pictures of. So let's have a look at some of those pictures from this lens now and we can go through what they look like. Next up, I've got my 24 to 200 mil lens, which is something that I bought relatively recently. As you can see, this is much bigger. Let's look at the size comparison between these two. Again, it's an f4 to 6.3. Let me just take the hood off <clears throat> so there's the actual size comparison of those two lenses um, as you can see it's significantly bigger it weighs a lot more um, and it just feels a lot better constructed it's something that um, I I find to be very well made definitely got some weight to it the focus ring is nice it's definitely a lens that feels very well made to me the extension when you zoom it so that's it fully extended and that's it fully retracted. And again, it's got the markers on here of 24 to 200 millimeters and you can lock it at 24 millimeters so that if it's in your bag, if you're carrying it around, it doesn't actually extend itself. It's a Z mount, but this time it's a metal um, end to it, which doesn't really make much difference to me. Um, I guess it, it will be a bit more durable. This is a 67 millimeter thread compared to this one, which is a 52 millimeter thread. So the the actual lens itself is is a lot wider. When I'm buying my ND filters and things, that's something that I need to take into account for that as well. It also comes with this lens hood. And the idea of this is that it just goes on the end here, just kind of clicks into place. And then that will protect the lens from some of the light that's coming into it. So if you've got bright light coming from one particular direction, then these parts on here will, will protect it and stop that light flaring in your picture. What's also very good is that it, if you dropped it or anything, chances are it would land on the lens hood and protect the actual lens itself. So a bit of plastic on the end of the lens, it will bounce. It might crack, but that's not a big problem. Cracking the actual glass in your lens, that's a big problem. You won't be able to use it again after that. So that's those two lenses. Let's change things up a little bit now and get the 35mm off of my camera and compare that one as well. As I said, the third option is the 35mm f1.8. 
1.8 lens that I've got. So now on my camera, I'm filming this with the 24 to 200 mil lens at about 35 millimeters. So the shot may look a bit different. The background won't be quite so blurred. It may also be a little bit darker, um, but we'll have a look at that and compare that afterwards. So this is the 35 millimeter lens. This is an S line lens. So it's a higher higher quality glass in here that that's all it means this is a 62 millimeter thread and again we've got the metal z mount at the bottom and this time we have a switch on the side which is choosing between auto and manual focus um so that is that and again a hood for the lens which is actually quite big so that's the fully um constructed lens and let's again compare let's take that off for the moment and compare it to the 24 to 50 and that just shows the size these weigh about the same there's not a huge difference between these two um, but the image quality is far superior in this one with the f 1.8 you get a lot more light coming into the lens um, as you can probably see from this video everything's a little bit darker when it's shot at f4 and definitely the, the amount of blur behind me with the background is going to be significantly different. So those are my three lenses and I use them all for different things. So let's have a look at some of the pictures that I've got from them and we'll try and compare them and see which one's sharper, which one's uh, allows more light in, which one's more flexible. And then we'll be able to kind of come to a conclusion at the end as to whether these are good, bad or other. The other thing that I want to mention is ND filters. So I keep them in this little case, which I got with some headphones. So in here, we've got our filters and this is an ND 1000. So not much light gets through this at all, but this is a 67 millimeter thread, which is the same as my 24 to 200 mil lens. And then I've got these different sized rings so if I'm using it on my 35 millimeter lens, this is a 62 mil um, thread. So I've got an adapter which changes it from 67 millimeter to 62 millimeters. So rather than buying lots of these at different sizes, I just bought a set of these um, so that I can adapt the, the ND filter, which I bought for the biggest lens that I've got. And then I can adapt it down to the smaller ones. Nice and straightforward. So the benefit of that is that you pay for one ND filter, which is expensive. And then the step down ringers are actually relatively cheap. So rather than buying lots of ND filters, just buy one and then the step down rings. So this is my smallest lens. So now that can easily screw onto the end of there. It does significantly extend the length of the lens, particularly in this case. So it looks a bit silly, but only to about the same size as my 35 mil one. There we go. And what that does then is it has that ND filter on, so it lot, lets a lot less light through. I can then make my shutter speed a lot longer so that I can get those long exposures that I like. So um, particularly in the daytime when you're taking pictures of water, waterfalls, uh, lakes, things like that, and you want everything to be nice and smooth, having that long shutter speed, so 10, 15, 20 seconds, that would let so much light in normally that your picture would be very overexposed. Whereas with the ND filter, it allows you to, to extend that shutter time um, without letting so much light in. This is basically a pair of sunglasses to go onto your camera. So now for completeness, we are on the 24 to 50 mil on the camera, again at about 35 millimeters. And this is just to compare how this looks to the previous lens, which was the 24 to 200. Both are F4s to 6.3, but this one is significantly more substantial and uh, a bigger, 
bigger bit of glass, to be honest. So I want to see what the difference is between the two. So while we're here with this lens, this is my biggest threaded lens. So let's put on the ND filter. So rather than having to use all of the extension rings, this just goes right on the end there. Um, so it makes it a lot easier. There's no no additional bulk to this one. But having having the different step down rings makes it so much cheaper rather than having to buy so many different ND filters. So thank you for joining me on my photography journey today. I hope you found this useful. Quick comparison between those three different lenses. And like I said, I think the 35 millimeter one is my favorite for the sharpness and for the F1.8, that narrow, narrow depth of field. But the most versatile one is definitely the 24 to 200. I can t pop this on my camera and I know that whatever comes my way that day, I'll be able to take a picture of it. I've definitely found the, the 35 millimeter one is a bit short at times and I need that longer focal length for some of the pictures that I want to take. So there we go. It's the combination of the different lenses. I mean, if this was an f1.8, that would be fantastic, but it would also be massive and incredibly expensive. So I'm definitely happy with that. Thank you for joining me on my photography journey. My name's Steve and join me again next week for another one. See you then. Bye.